is trying to rejoin so shut down and reboot so let's wait for one more minute Is it working? Unmute. Unmute, unmute. Yes, I don't know. Uh, if you can hear me, I think we can just start also, no? Huh? Uh, you are still unable to listeners maybe something wrong with my speaker that is the the thing so but then i don't know how, how uh, hello yeah yeah we are able to listen to you so you are audible so you can start yes and if yeah. uh, anything is there i will call you and tell yeah okay. then that will be okay no okay, okay okay all right all right okay okay so, so so, uh, dear friends, uh, now we are having Professor Niloma with us. He is uh, head of the Department of uh, uh, Extension of, um, Department of Extension Education and Rural Development in Mizoram University, and he is going to talk about building community leadership. So, uh, sir, you may start. You may start, sir. Yes, uh, maybe we'll just start because I cannot hear any voice from the other side, but then I don't know if uh, my voice is audible, I think that should be enough, right? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, sir, yes. So you it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Huh? Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. If anything uh, is there, I will put in chat box or you can put in chat box. Uh, like but it. now the problem is where is the chat box? Also, I cannot see now. Yeah, it's uh, just there. Okay. Because you can, you can just call me up if there is anything happening. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Because <laughs> I don't know. Something wrong with my system. Uh, uh, you, you you said, you got very unique problem. You usually people have problem with mic. Yeah, you got problem yeah. with the speaker. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay then. Continue, sir. Yeah. Continue. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Bartendu, the coordinator for this program. Uh, yeah. My topic today will be uh, building community leaders. This is uh, quite a unique topic which we, we uh, rarely uh, uh, talk about, right? In the leadership uh, topics, we usually talk about, you know, the traditional leadership. I mean, like uh, the, the, how do we call it? It's uh, the common leadership styles. We will be talking like, okay, these are the leadership style, bureaucratic, democratic, laissez-faire, all those things are there. But then for today's topic, I have chosen uh, a topic called building community leaders. Then, you know, my presentation, I have prepared it in such a way that it is easy un uh, to understand. Then in the later part of my presentation, it will be, you know, kind of 
you know, trying to see whether we can be a part of community leaders, right? Can we be community leaders? So we will conclude in that way, okay? How easy or how difficult it is to be community leaders. So as teachers, you know, we have a very big role in building community leaders. Not building others, building ourselves to be community leaders. That is the thing. So uh, my presentation, the first uh, point will be to define community. How do we define community? You know, if you browse internet, you can see a lot of definitions on community. For those who belong to the discipline of sociology, social work, rural development, you know, uh, anthropology, you know, all the definition of community. How do we define, right? There should be people, there should be uh, a place, there should be a boundary, geographical boundary and all. But we will see what do we mean by community. This would be another kind of uh, defining community. All right. The first point here I would like to mention here is the notion of community is important for the concept of community leadership. And it can be defined by locality as well as interest. As I said, when we define community, the first thing which comes into our mind is locality, right? When we say locality, it's a place, right? With a geographical boundary and the people in it. So these entities will be there when we define community in terms of locality, right? But then, on the other side, we can see here the, 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 the word interest as well as interest. So it can be locality and it can be interest group as well. So when you say interest, what do we mean by? Now, we as teachers, we belong to academic community, right? You may be somewhere in the United States, you may be somewhere in China, you may be somewhere in Burma, somewhere in Thailand. But, you know, uh, regardless of the geographical boundary there, we have one interest, right? So that can be also considered as interest. So when we define community leadership, it can be defined in terms of locality, place, or it can be defined in terms of interest. That's it. The next point. Here, Macmillan and Chavez define community by four dimensions. We will see here membership, of course. When we see community without membership, what is it? It's just a place, right? Then influence. What do we mean by influence? We will see in the next presentation. Okay, reinforcement and shared emotional connection. So these four dimensions have been given to define community by Macmillan and Chavis. All right, the next point we will try to define what do we mean by membership here? Okay, people feel like they belong to a group of, a group that means membership. When we say, oh, I belong to this group, then that is a membership, okay, and they are or at least feel like they are able to make difference within that group. So that means making difference. Being a member of that group, you bring or you make difference. That is influence. In other terms, it can be looked into as positive influence. Okay, that is there. Then the next point, what is that? Community can meet their members' need. Their members' need. So there is membership. Then there is influence, right? Then when we are trying to make 
to meet our members' need, that is reinforcement. While shared emotional connection is built through shared places and experiences such as joint history and time spent together, right? Now, let's say, you know, you have an alumni of one particular school, but you may be in different places. But you can be considered as that community, right? So those are there. Then the time spent together. Oh, sometimes I was in college with these people. So we form a group of people, a community that way. All right. So let us go and continue for the next. Community is not only linked to a physical entity, but communities can also be based on shared interest, such as culture and politics. Right? It's clear. No need further explanation, right? Community is not only linked to a physical entity, which is a, a, a place with geographical boundary. It's not only that. But communities can also be based on shared interests. We have talked about it. This is defined by Walker, right? As culture and politics. So we may have some shared interest in terms of our culture, in terms of our political, you know, affiliation, or so, so and so. Communities can be seen as complex systems, which is uh, by Onyx and Leonard. Communities can be seen as complex systems, which are not only defined by boundaries, such as geographical location, but are open to different participants despite their location. So it is not talking about locality at all, location. So it is free of boundary, right? Another one here, the lender and uh, Frederiksen Define also here. Furthermore, people can be members of multiple communities. This is important, right? When you say, I belong to this community, okay, academic community, but maybe you, be, you may belong to another cultural community, right? Traditional community. So, any kind of like sports community, right? Can transfer, translate, and transform experience form one community to another. So here, very obvious thing we can see here is that a person can belong to many communities, right? But if you talk in terms of only locality or a particular geographical area, then you may not, it will be difficult to be, to be you know, having many communities, right? But this is very clear. One person can be, he can belong to many communities. All right. Then here, community leadership. We will just briefly define what do we mean. We know now what do we mean by community. Okay. Community. Then after this, we will define community leadership. What do we mean by community leadership here? Uh, let's see. This one is... I don't know, this one is not going. Anyway, community leadership is different from a classical notion of leadership being about leaders, right? It is different from classical notion of leadership. You know, the general leadership we, we, we have been talking about. Leaders, asking, persuading, influencing flowers. So, you know, in my, my other topic, you know, when we find, we define leader, leaders, you know, the words, these, these words are there, persuading. If you are a leader, you should be able to persuade people to follow you. Influence, at least you should have influence to your followers. Then leaders, when you define leader, at least you should have one follower, right? At least minimum. Without having follower, you cannot be a leader, right? That's true. So community leadership is not like traditional or classical leadership. It's a leader asking, it's not like that. In turn, it usually is less 
hierarchical. You know, the community leaders, sometimes they have no power actually. Like our bureaucrat system of leadership, right? It's not fully hierarchical. Of course, if you are a community leader, people will obey you, you will follow you, but you, you are, it's less hierarchical in form, right? Then here, often based on volunteer action. This is what I like. Community leadership is based, mainly based on volunteer action. Sunbur and it's Haki. It's Haki. They define community leader as, you know, volunteer action, voluntary action. So later on, we, we will speak more about it. It is more of voluntary. You may not get any, you know, benefit out of it, but then you voluntary, you volunteer yourself to be a community leader. Involving the creation of social capital. Yes? We know what is social capital, right? When you talk about sustainable development or any type of development, the main important thing is social capital there, right? Financial is important, but then the social capital is more important there. So involving the creation of social capital. When you talk about community leadership, it's voluntary, then it is a kind of creation of social capital of like-minded people, right? All, you know, of similar community. Acting as a symbolism for change. Here the word change, you try to remember, change. You are there as community leader to bring change to the community. You know, when we were, uh, when I was in my university, when I was uh, taking, taking up my PG, PG courses, you know, we, come to, a, we, we learn a particular subject, you know, wherein we talk a lot about change. You know, one of the definition of change is that, you know, some people say that there is no permanent thing in the world than change. There is nothing more permanent than change. Right? Change is permanent. But the word change is not, uh, not by itself. It's not a permanent thing. But change is permanent. Right? There is nothing more permanent than change. That means today and tomorrow, you will see changes. The environment, the community setting, the people, the look. But when we talk about acting as a symbolism for change, positive change and negative change will be there. When you say, okay, this forest has been, I mean, like has uh, been changing since the last few years back, 20, 30 years back. But that change, whether it is a kind of deforestation or, you know, it's a kind of more trees, afforestation, here we are talking about positive change. Okay, you bring about positive change as community leader, and that's all. Okay, that is it. Then here, often informal, informal. In our classical way of leadership, it's formal, right? The setup is very formal, non-elected. Of course, community leaders are elected sometimes, but it is often non-elected. You don't need to be elected as leader of the community. But certain issue comes up, then you take the lead. Then you are the leader there. Okay, sort of thing. So it is often informal, non-elected leaders. It's quite interesting, right? It is not the, the leadership we have been talking so for several times. It is a different kind of leadership. Right? 
acting as symbolism for change, often informal and non-elected leaders. How come if you are not elected or if you are not appointed, how can you become a leader? We will talk about later. We'll talk about it later on, right? So these are there. Okay, here, not a tightly defined concept. Sullivan said that community leadership is not a tightly defined concept, but it is also defined by the boundaries of the community within which it operates. And community leadership can consider, consist of one individual or a group of people. It can be one individual or it can be a group of people. This is how people define community leadership. Based on the literature, these are the definition I, I got. Okay. Here, another thing here is unlike organizational leadership that has tended to rely on positional power. We, we, we talk about informal, right? But now it is, yeah, here also it's not like a formal organization leadership that has tended to rely on positional power. So here your position is up there, right? This positional power is there in the today, I mean like the classical uh, leadership. But here we are talking about a leader without much of the positional power there. And subsequently attributed leadership to those positions, right? It's about uh, positional power. Leaderships are not. Leadership from a community perspective has tended to be more emergent. You try to remember this word, emergent. It's issue based. Sometimes things come in, then it requires someone's intervention. Then one girl, one boy or one lady will come and take up initiative there. It's a kind of emergent leadership, community leadership, yes. Okay, but there might be another kind of a community leader who, who is elected who is considered to be, you know, leader in the community, that is also there, but that mostly it is a kind of emergent leadership. Specifically leadership opportunities have generally been initiated. When an issue has been identified, leaders have tended to emerge through the initiation and spread of interest around an issue. We have talked about it, right? So it is, defined by itself here. Okay, no need more elaboration over that. Effective community leaders have been characterized as change agents. We have talked about change agent, right? We have defined what kind of change. It's a positive change. Of course, a community leader followed by many, he can lead the community in the wrong way, in a negative way. So the change will be negative change. Right? But here we are talking about positive change. Individuals with the ability to mobilize others, it's clear, create conditions and take the initiative. Right? You know, there is somewhere you need to take initiative. So you try to intervene, you create the condition, then you initiate. Right? That kind of thing, as we said earlier, it's emergent kind of thing based on situation, right? Based on issues, those are there. Effective community leader ten, leaders tend to have a sense of service. This is what I like, sense of service. The word we have to remember is it's a kind of emergent leadership, right? It's a kind of voluntary, action then it's a symbolism of change agent right then here we can see a sense of service this explains all about the community leadership when you have a sense of service then you are qualified to be a community leader right 
So as teacher, can we be community leader? We will see later on. Yes or no? Now it may not be required, but later on we will see. Okay. Here you can see accountability again. Right? Many people define community leader effective here. It's not only community leader. It is effective community leaders. Right? A sense of service, accountability. In the leader, in the ordinary leadership style, the classical leadership, do we see accountability? You know, I like a lecture, you know, two-way lecture where it is a kind of participative, participatory lecture. I always like participatory approach, you know. I really wish this uh, program can be conducted, you know, in uh, offline mode, physical, so we can, we can see our faces together. I mean, like, then we can interact freely. So a question is asked, then answer is given, then discussion, interaction is there. So I like that kind of environment, but here it's not possible. But, you know, the question I'll be throwing you, uh, it, it, it's not necessary that you give me the answer, but you can just give an answer to yourself. Accountability. When you see leadership, political leadership particularly, do we see accountability? Right? Anyway, the answer is ours. Okay, here, effective community leaders, they have a sense of service. They have accountability. All right, we'll go to next. Here, community leaders have also been found to be highly participative. It's not only one way order. A leader at the top giving order, you do this. But here, community leader is always participative. The decision is made jointly with the followers or whoever is in the group, participating and have been shown to take as symbol symbolic role of the group. You know, in community, when you see community leader there, people see him as, oh, a symbolic role player of the particular group, right? These things are happening in our villages also. Furthermore, an implicit attribution of leadership has been found to be more readily made to individual that behave ethically. Here we, we take the word ethic, ethical. Then here we take a word, the word moral, morally. And with an evident set of values. Community leadership is defined in terms of individual having ethical, behave ethically, then morally with an evident set of values. So these words, try to remember this one. Okay, voluntary, right? Morally, values, ethical, all those words are there. Right? A sense of service. All right. Community leadership is the courage, creativity, and capacity to inspire participation. You know, in our traditional leadership style, the leadership is played in one direction only. From top to bottom. Whatever the leaders say that you have to do, follow it. That's all. Community leadership, on the other hand, is participating. That means, oh, let us come together. Let us discuss together. Then, based on our decision, let us take up our role together. You play this part, I play this part. You play that role, and I play this role. Everything is in a participative manner. So it inspires participation. Okay. So development and sustainability for strong community, all these things are there. Courage is there, creativity is there, inspired participation, development, sustainability for strong community. Okay, it talks about sustainability also. Okay, that is that. 
Okay, now we will see community leadership studies. We are, as I said, academic communities, right? Who all the participants of this program, including me, and including the coordinator, Professor Bartendu, we are, you know, belonging to academic community, right? Since it is academic community, I just would like to do a little presentation on the research which has been done on community leadership. Right? So based on my literature, literature review, I came across certain fields of specialization subjects wherein community leadership had been studied. Number one, education. In education, it is not like the, the, you know, the hierarchical educational leadership and all, but community under the subject of education community leadership studies were carried out. So if you want to see Bukowski et al, you know, and really 2012, uh, they have the, their findings, their research and all, you can just go through all this later on. Then here, health sector. Community leadership is very important in the health sector, particularly in rural areas, right? The community leaders who voluntarily took up the activities of health. It may not be necessarily, you know, the government schemes, but for the general welfare, the general health of the community, such leadership had been studied. Then local government, it is very sure, right? When we talk about local government, that is local leadership, community leadership, right? So live 2007. Then local politics, right? In politics, who plays leadership there? The local, these are there, right? And another one is tourism. Now, tourism is okay, but then, you know, uh, yeah, it can be community, you know, like it can be ecotourism or what, whatever tourism is there. When you talk about tourism, uh, you can see many tourism activities in the urban areas, but mostly, you know, people like to go to rural area, maybe, I mean, uh, a little bit far island. You go to Thailand, not mainly, like not in Bangkok, right? You can see many uh, islands where you can have, uh, you know, the thing. So, so such kind of tourism uh, leadership, community leadership, in the purview of tourism studies have been conducted. These are the list of studies uh, I have come across so far, but then this is just for our information. It's not that important to our topic, but then anyway, just, just to have an idea on how people have done on community leadership studies. Okay, here, identifying community leaders. There are five primary methods of identifying community leaders in communities. How do we under identify community leaders? One, positional approach. This is the, you know, the, the, the approach they followed in the studies of those uh, areas, those subjects I have just mentioned. Positional approach. We will explain a little more of this. Okay. Reputational approach. What do we mean by this? We will just uh, explain later on. Number one is positional approach. Number two is reputational approach. Number three is decision making the approach. Number four is opinion leadership approach, right? Opinion leadership approach, social participation approach. So these are the five approaches identified by Boone and Al. Okay. Let's see, what do we mean by positional approach? Here, this method identifies leaders who are in position of authority. Very clear, right? Those who are in the position with authority. Using this approach, an extend agent, extension agent identifies people who make key decisions in local organizations such as political groups. So, 
you want to identify a community leader and you go to the community, then you ask, who are the political leaders here? Who, what, what political groups are there? Who are the leader? Then what churches, what kind of churches are there in the community? Who are the leaders? Schools. Who are leaders in the school management committee or in the school itself? Social organization. Is there any social organization or voluntary organizations there? Who are the leaders? Government entities, right? Financial institution, who are there? So based on the position, you try to identify the group of leaders there in the community. The next one is a reputational approach. Yeah, this part is quite simple. This method uses members of the target audience to identify well-informed members of the community who should be engaged. <clears throat> so you go to the community and identify those well-informed members. Then you talk to them. Okay, who are the leaders there? When using this approach, an agent first identify people who are knowledgeable about their community and then ask them the question such as, who does this community look to when an important decision needs to be made, right? Now we need, like, suppose you want to identify a community leader. Of course, there will be a government official already in terms of position, he is there in the position. So no need uh, to worry much about it. But then you want to identify who people consider as their leader, right? So who does this community look to when an important decision needs to be made? So usually in this community, uh, difficult or important decision is made. So who usually make that kind of decision? Maybe the village, the village chief, the village head, or whoever. So then you will be able to identify, oh, the community consider this fellow, this person as their leader in making such kind of important decision, right? Who would choose to make a decision? Who would you choose to make a decision that would affect this community? So these are just example, simple, simple questions. All right, so this is like who are reputed leaders in the community, right? Another one, decision-making approach. This method identifies leaders who are actively participating in formal decision-making in the community, right? Usually, if you go to the community, women will not be identified. If you ask the community, especially in Indian context, you know, the participation of women in decision making is very low. But now, I think things have improved slowly, right? But then in many of the villages, women will not even come to the Gram Sabha, the public meeting, because they say, oh, we have no voice. They're reluctant to speak out also, right? It is a reality. But here, decision making, who are participating in the decision making in the community? then you if you ask them then they will tell you then you can identify the community leaders there right opinion leadership approach this method identifies leaders who set examples in the community right here these are leaders who may not hold formal position right but have high levels of social participation and social status high level of social participation they may not be in the leadership position, but they participate more in social activities, social status, as well as great levels of exposure to mass media. They are knowledgeable. So people take opinions from them. Opinion leaders are identified when people who are part of the community are asked, where do you look for advice and information? Okay, you want to get some information. Then who do you go to? Who do you go to? Then if you go to that particular person, then, okay, they usually get advice from this particular person. So you can easily identify the, the community based on the information you want to get.
All right, social participation approach. This method identifies leaders through their participation in voluntary organization in community. That's all. Participation. You, any kind of activities, you will see this man, this lady. So the participation, so participation is more. So if you want to find some community leaders who are more participating more in the voluntary program or any kind of voluntary action in the community, then these are the right people, right? So uh, this is a kind of approach in leadership studies. Anyway, now we will go to another point here. Okay, elements of successful community leader. Elements of successful community leaders. Right. Here, num, here, these are the elements. Onyx and Leonard, when they use complexity leadership theory in their analysis of five communities, they identified seven elements of successful community leadership. This may not be that important, but then it's good to know as academicians, right? Later on, maybe we may want to go and do some research on uh, community leadership. These are important points also. But for those who are not so much interested in studies in leadership, these are not important. But then uh, we are a mixed group of people, right? Number one, leaders are embedded in the formal and informal network of community. Number two, decision-making was shared with the community, right? These are the, the community leaders, effective, I mean like uh, elements of community leaders. Leaders are embedded in formal and informal network of community. So doesn't care whether it is formal or it is informal, they are just there acting as leader and people consider them as leader. Decision making was shared with the community. It's not only one man show. The decision is making jointly and shared with the, the community. Number three, leaders were operating in an open system, engaging with others. Open system. It's not, when we say open system, it is not closed, right? It's not closed. It's open system. You know, you know, it's uh, like changeable also. They, they don't follow, a, you know, a rigid kind of thing. Based on, since it is a participate, Three approach, you know, they are more participate. The community share more of this. So whatever ideas come from the community, then you know the mindset also changes something like that. So it's a kind of you know operating in open system. It's adjustable, flexible. You know, in our NEP now, national education policy. Now, a very catchy word there. One very catchy word is there: flexibility. Flexibility to exit after completing of one year, then flexibility to join back after exiting for maybe two, three years, he can come back and get it admitted there in the same program, you know, those kind of flexibility, then choice of subject flexibility. It's a kind of this also community leaders are operating in open system, right? That's it. Leaders had vision about the future of the community. The community leaders, they have vision about the future of the community. You know, if you go to rural villages, communities, rural communities, you will find these visionary people. Regardless of their educational background, they have very good vision about the future of their community. That is one thing I like in the rural area. I belong to rural development department. So I deal with mm, many times with the, the rural people there, the community leaders. I find this uh, community leader, regardless of their educational background, they have very good vision about the future development of their community. That's why, you know, the approach here in development is most successful when you really discuss with the community because they know the best of what they need.
You don't know from the table, you don't know. You cannot just determine, oh, these people, they did this. No, not that way. Now the, the approach, the development approach has changed, right? So leaders had practical management skills. You know, in my other training, I usually tell people, the students also, in the, the trainees also, the participants, I usually tell them, uh, don't think that just because you have a PhD degree or a master's degree, don't think that you know everything. The community, the rural people, the community members, they know they have their own skills. They have their own skills. So leaders had practical management skills. They may not be in, you know, a big management school, right? World-class management school. They may not be there, but they have leaders had practical management skills. How we can say that? You know, these people, they never saw even our university. They have never seen our university. They are just there in their village attending school. But then, you know, they have been surviving for years. What do that say? What does that say? That means they have their own management skills. They survive throughout, even before you visited. 100 years, 20 years, 30 years, right? So these leaders had practical management skills. So the community leaders have the practical management skills. Leaders had planning in place for their potential successors. You know, a good leader will train his successor to be good leader again. That kind of change is there, the chain, right? Leaders had planning in place for their potential successors. This is very important. And these things are more in community setting, right? A good leader will train good followers to become leaders after he ceased to be leader, right? Leaders had commitment, persistence, and energy. Here, the community leaders, you know, uh, based on their five community a leader uh, analysis, they came to a conclusion that leaders had commitment, persistence, energy. Community leaders, they are committed. They had persistence. They have energy to lead the community, to fulfill that vision of the state. Okay. That is there. So let us just uh, continue with the Now the quality of great community leaders. What are the community, I mean, like the qualities of great community leaders? Self-awareness. Self-awareness. Okay. We have self-awareness there. A community leader without self-awareness may not be a good leader. Here, a community, a good community leader should be knowledgeable of his or her strength and weakness. If you think that you have all the strength, you have no much weakness, then that is your weakness itself. That is your weakness itself. Okay, so a good community leader should be knowledgeable of his, her, his strength, his or her strength or weaknesses. Why? This will enable the leader to exploit better his ability. Okay, now your strength is this, but your weakness is this. If you are knowledgeable about that, then to fill the gap of your weakness, you know, you need somebody to come and help you. That's important. That's why a good community, great community leaders, they have self-awareness, right? Leading others with a knowledge of self is as a leader's job, since it allows for the selection of the best fit roles and sharing of responsibility. So if you know that you are good in this way, you may not need much assistance, right? But if you know that, okay, this side, this aspect, you are a little bit weak, so you can choose the right person to fill in that gap, that weakness. That's it. So good, great community leaders they have the quality of self-awareness. 
Another point here is eagerness to learn and adapt. You know, there are leaders, even if with your good advice, they will not listen. They will not want to learn. They will think that, oh, my idea is the best, right? Such kind of thing is not. As a community leader, earning respect from members is one of the key enablers of one's role. To do so, learning to listen from others, appreciating their input and changing courses of action is essential, right? It's very clear, right? You need to learn, listen, and appreciate the inputs of others so that you can go into the right direction, right? Sometimes if you think, oh, you are always right, my boss is always right, always right, then things are not going well that way. Okay, another point is empathy. What do we mean by empathy over here? Empathy. I think those having psychological psychology background, they know this empathy, the word empathy very well, right? In other words, we define empathy is like putting yourself into others' shoes, right? Those are there. Let's see. As a leader, it's important that you recognize how the community perceives you as their leader. Empathy allows one to imagine different viewpoints from the community members as well as understand their feelings. With this perspective, a leader may be perceived as one who cares. If you are having empathy, people will consider, will perceive you as who cares, the one who cares. And this will increase his or her credibility in the community. When people have problems, when they have issues, if they come to you and ask you for a solution or advice, that's it. That is the role of community. That's all, right? Empathy, putting yourself, understanding other situation. There are so many leaders who don't even understand or who don't even want to pay attention to the problem of the community members, right? But here, quality of a great community leader one is empathy. The next, honesty and integrity. Every time we talk about leadership, this topic is coming in all the time. Honesty and integrity. But where are this honesty and integrity existing? It's a big question. There is a big question mark. Are you honest? Are, do you, uh, wh what is your integrity? Our leaders, look at it. Are they honest? Our political leaders, look at them. Are they honest? Do they have integrity? Do they have integrity? I have big question. I have big question mark there. The answer is yourself. Okay, you have your own answer, doesn't matter. A leader must ensure that he is trustworthy. In community, if people don't trust you, how can you play a role of leader there, the role of a leader there? It has to be, there. you have to be trustworthy, honest, integrity. Trust facilitate productive space for discussion and desired social change. Once trust is broken, respect is diminished and productivity is eliminated. You know, uh, when we talk about trust, in community development or in rural development, we always talk about trust, relationship building, trust building. Until and unless you have good relationship and the people have trust on you, they will not fully participate in your project implementation. So honesty, integrity, trust. Once trust is broken, respect is diminished. You know, it, we don't need to explain more, right? You trust somebody and that trust is broken by some instances. 
then it is very difficult to trust that person again. It is easier to build trust, but once it is broken, it is very difficult. It takes very long time and energy to rebuild that trust. Okay, that's it. Okay, another thing point here is dedication. Dedication. It's not only for community leaders. Leadership, good leaders is dedicated anyway, right? But then uh, we will put it in the sense of community leaders. Here, as community leader, who most likely is playing a voluntary role? It's important that you recognize your own benefit from the role, right? Time spent on a community role can only be beneficial if it is seen to create space for desirable social change, both for the leader and the community. So we talk about voluntary in there. But as community leader, you are there in the community, but you are not getting paid for the leadership there. Because it's a uh, voluntary, right? But here, the benefit should be seen in terms of what? In terms of your service and the impact of it, whether this brings desirable social change. If so, then that is the thing. That is the thing. So dedication. The community leader is dedicated even though he is not getting back the benefit in terms of cars, in terms of money, but he can see social change there. You know, one thing, my experience is like, you are, I was in the state government in the rural development department. You know, we form self-help groups. Then when they come up with, you know, a kind of livelihood activities with a little bank loan, you know, they are very much thankful to us. You know, when we see those uh, people, we are very, I mean, I'm very satisfied. I'm happy. More than what salary I got from the government. The benefit the rural people are getting, the enjoyment, the face, the smiling face after, you know, earning a certain uh, amount of livelihood. Their happy faces, you know. It's really satisfying. So that kind of thing, regardless of whatever is paid off, this is there, right? So the beneficial, the benefit is seen in terms of the social, you know, change. That, that's it. It doesn't require that you receive money, a lot of money out of that. It is good to receive, but then even then if you don't get it. You know, the community leader, even though he or she is not getting any uh, monetary benefit, he or she is dedicated because he wants to help. It's a sense of service, as we said earlier, right? Then service here. Involving oneself in general community service is yet another great quality of community leader. As a leader being seen to serve your own members, create respect and legitimate one's role in the community, right? Do we need to explain here? No, it's clear, right? No need, time is running. So we'll continue. Here, another point here is, what is this? I could not see. This is blocking. A community leader should be able to interact with other members. Uh, this one line is uh, really blocking me. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Uh, something wrong with my this thing, but then let's see. Okay. Okay, here I think. Yeah, dedication is there. We have covered service is there. Oh, interpersonal skills. Yeah, community yeah. leaders have the quality, good quality of interpersonal skills, right? As we said. You cannot do the work alone. So it has a, it is like a community, a participatory, right? This calls for good communication and collaboration skills. Being able to negotiate, mediate, listen to others and articulate. This is it. Okay, forward thinking. 
vision. We, we were talking about vision, right? A community leader has good vision for the community. That's it. Forward looking, forward thinking. Forward thinking is about being visionary as a leader. One should dream for his community and effectively share the dream. It is not only good to dream, you have to share that dream to others. He should be able to think of the future and set sustainable goals. As leaders, she said, you know, the community leaders have their own vision, very good vision for the future of their community. This is it. Her own critical thinking skills and involve the younger generation. Right? These are the things. What else is there? Intelligence. Competent leader is seen as one who can take care of tough stuff that may happen to him or community. It, it is not always happening with the leaders. Right? Intelligence here is beyond being smart to include high levels of both emotional and social. This is a little bit high, but then, you know, since it is uh, here, let us keep it as okay. A leader has to be uh, have intelligence. Anyway, that's it. If he or she doesn't have that quality, also doesn't matter. But this is uh, one of the things, right? Then motivation. Without motivation, what will happen? Are we motivated? Are the community motivated? Community leaders is motivated himself, herself. Then he is good in motivating others. A great leader is uh, inspires us to create a desired social change. He does this in variety of ways, but we always remember to include others in his thought process and course of action. Motivation, course of, when you include people for the good cause of their, you know, for their good cause, that they are motivated, right? That's it. Here are you a community leader. Now we are coming to the, the a little end part of our presentation. We have covered, we have defined community, right? Then we have defined community leadership, right? Several, then qualities we talk about, right? Qualities. Then now are you a community leader? This is the answer we are going to answer. This is the end part. Community leaders take responsibility for the well-being and improvement of their communities. Right? Clear. Are you a community leader? Yes or no? Are you interested in becoming one? Are you a community leader? If your answer is yes, okay. If no, then are you interested? in becoming one. If still no, then what else? Hopeless. We are hopeless, right? <laughs> we are hopeless. So are you interested in becoming one? If yes, let us see what, what kind of leadership roles we can play. Try answering the questions in this leadership quiz. Are you someone who wants to improve your community? Do you want to improve your community? If yes, good. If no, doesn't matter, still good. Without your leadership, the community can still grow. We have to remember, right? But it is always good to be a part of the process in improving our community. As teachers, in higher education institutions. It is very much our noble responsibility to take part in improving our community, right? So you want to be, do you want to improve your community? If yes, fine. If no, what can we do? Has something do, do you have something to contribute? I think so. We have something to contribute. What is your degree for? What is your master's degree, your PhD degree for? Is it only teaching here and getting the salary from that? If it is so, okay, fine. You are not to be blamed. 
but you can still contribute apart from your regular. That's why our national education policy 2020 is emphasizing too much on community engagement. Holistic development of the whole human being, not only confined to classroom teaching, the students and the teachers will now have to expose themselves in the rural setting, experiencing the rural reality. So now, one of the compulsory component of NDP 2020 has become community engagement. In the near future, if we have not implemented, in the near future, we'll be having a kind of summer internship during the semester break for our teachers, our students to go to rural villages and spend time there. Two credits is allocated there, right? Anyway, uh, this is not an EP class, but then it's uh, good to, uh, to, to share also, right? Does not wait around for someone else to get the job done. Some issue, fire is burning there. A house is burning, firing. Then if you leave it, okay, this is the job of uh, fire department. I will not involve. It's up to you. But then leadership, do you wait around for someone else to do? If yes, then that is not good. But you don't wait around someone else to get the job done. If you have answered yes to any of the above question, you are most likely a community leader already on your way to become one, right? So the question is there, it's very clear. Yes or no? If yes to at least one question is there, you are likely becoming a community leader. You're already a community leader to some extent. You don't have to run for office or be given a title for the leader, for a leader. All you need to do is decide to take responsibility for some corner or a bigger chunk. It may not, it, it, it doesn't have to be a big action. It can be a small action. That is enough. Though it is recognized, I mean, like, people don't recognize you. Go ahead, do it of your community, right? Community leaders are often self-appointed. How come? If it is self-appointed, it's shameful also, right? People don't see you as a community leader, but you are self-appointed there and you say that I am community. It's not like that. When a particular issue comes, right? Someone crossing the road, an old lady crossing the a busy highway road, you help her, no? Pulling her hand, then help cross the road. You are a community leader in that sense. You don't need to be given a title of community leadership there, but then you are a community leader because you are helping somebody who is in need, that's all. Even people who run for office first make a decision that they want to be a leader. You can probably take as much as a responsibility of your community as you are willing. It's just a willingness. We are talking about political will. Political will, right? If there is a real political will, we can do so many things we said, right? Here it is also true with willingness to take responsibility in the community. But regardless of getting remuneration or pay or whatever, it comes as a willingness to serve the community, even if it is free of course. That's it, right? Many community leaders learn by trial and error. That's not a bad way to do. People mostly learn from experience. So to start your community action and try to lead the community, for the betterment of the community. You try, there'll be error, you try again, but then you know, from experience, you will learn. 
You know, I wanted to share the story of Anna Hazare. I'm very much a fish, uh, fascinated to his story. But then there is no much time now. You know, he was an army man, a driver in the army, truck driver. Right? He served in several states, even in Mizoram, he used, he used, he used to serve. I, I, I read from the, the, the paper. Then he was not satisfied. Then he, he, he retired early, he got early retirement, then he went back to his, his village. Scarcity, steady, steady of water, uh, deforestation was there. Then he restored all those forests. Then he made the village in such a way that the village previously that was the po poverty, uh, poverty uh, striking the district village. But they become, you know, one of the best villages there in terms of forest in terms of water availability, in terms of agriculture. He took the initiative, that's it. We will not uh, deal more on that because that is just a gist of Anahazare. You read in the YouTube, you, you listen also, you read, try to browse it from the internet, you will get most of the, the story there. Okay, why should you be a community leader? Why should you be a community? Leadership can be good for you. We have 15 more minutes. We'll try to finish within time. Leadership can be good for you. Why should you be a community leader? To answer this question, here is the, the answer. Leadership can be good for you. Not in terms of money, but in terms of spiritual and mental, all those things, because you will be satisfied if you do something good for others. I think most of you, you know better than me. I know. Because you have done so many good things, right? So when you do, you help somebody, you are happy more than those whom you help. You experience. In fact, many people enjoy leading. We enjoy leading. Not as a leadership position, but we enjoy leading, right? You don't have to lead out of obligation. Now, you are head of the department. You lead the department. That is out of obligation. Right? But in community leadership, you are not leading because it is your obligation. So you don't have to lead out of obligation. It has to come with like, you know, a, a willingness, a desire, a sense of service that is there. You can choose to lead and participate in ways that energize you and help you grow instead of leading in a way that drains you. You are leading in such a way that energize you and help you grow instead of leading in ways that drains you. You know, if you see the, if you study administrative, you know, this a leadership setting, you will come across the word burnout. Why this burnout? It's draining you, right? Your duty is so heavy, it's draining you. But the community leadership we are talking about is in the sense of servicing, sense of service to other, for others, right? So it energizes you and it helps you grow. That's it, the difference. You can choose to work on issues that you care about. You take any issue of the community. It can be cleanliness, you know, sanitation, whatever you take up. You can take on challenges that are fun, rewarding or interesting. It's up to you. In becoming community leader, it's up to you what kind of activities you want to take up in leading, right? Here, you can make a difference. Do you ever dream, daydream that you are the one to save the day? Yes or no? It's up to you. Perhaps you are the passerby who drives into the water to rescue the drowning child. Some, a child is drowning there and you are just passerby. You will, after seeing the child drowning there, you will continue going in your pace. Or you will just get down and say, rescue the child. Maybe you are the person who deftly persuades the terrorists to put down the gun. 
just in the nick of time, right? That leadership, no leadership can do this to persuade the terrorists to put down guns, right? but you may be lucky enough to persuade a terrorist to put down his gun, right? The kind of leadership can be there. These, these are just examples. It is human to want to make a significant difference in the world, right? It is human. We want to make difference, but it's not like a world fame, you know, world your international fame or something like that. Significant difference in the world. Don't think about the world in a big sense. The world, our community. We can start from our community. The day-to-day -day acts of community leaderships are usually not as dramatic as described above. And they usually don't inspire chorus of recognition. As I said, people may not recognize you. They may not give you recognition, but go ahead, do your job. Do something good for the community. Still, as a community leader, you can make a profound contribution. Establishing a daycare center, increasing job opportunities in your community. These, these are examples. Getting rid of a toxic waste dump or empowering others to lead are all activities that are heroic in their own way, right? We may not be able to do all these things, but then these are examples. You can choose the thing you enjoy and the thing you can do. That's all. Here, the story of Isis Johnson. We will try to conclude with, you know, I have uh, very few slides left and we have 10 more minutes. Okay. The story of Isis Johnson. Let's see, what is there? When Isis Johnson of New Orleans was four years old, she saw a news report about starving children in Ethiopia, which made her feel the need of to act. A four year old girl seeing the news report about starving children in Ethiopia, you know, her heart was touched. Then she felt the need to act. She thought that, oh, I need to do something. At five, the next year, with her grandmother at her side, she went knocking on doors, asking for food donations for poor people in her community. Right? She has that feeling inside, a need to act. So she started at the age of five, knocking the door of their neighbors asking for food donations for the poor people in her community. When she was six, six years old, she collected 1,600 1, items to give to the people in need. You know, from knocking the doors of the neighboring houses, she got this uh, item. Then the next year, she collected 4,000 items. When Hurricane Andrew hit, she collected 1,648 pieces of clothing to send to people affected by the storm. Shortly after a hurry, the hurricane, Isis's grandmother suggested that she start a foundation. With the help of her mother, grandmother, and a lawyer, she established the Isis Johnson Foundation. Isis was then eight years old. Imagine. An eight years old girl started a foundation of her in her name. Who taught her? I think at this age, maybe the parents or you know the teachers, I don't know. But then for me, I just see it as like it came from her own desire to act. You know, it's a, a kind of a sense of serving. The community leadership, she has become at the age of four, she has become, from the age of four, she has become, you know, started to become a good community leader in that particular field. Right? 
here we may not all establish our own foundations by the time we are eight but we can make a significant difference if we put our minds to it the thing is we have to see whether we are really you know motivated or we have the desire to do this doing so can be infinitely satisfying as i said you will be satisfied i will be we will be satisfied right there is room in this world for more community leaders when we talk about community leaders it's not we are not talking about only one leader in the community we can play different roles as community leader in the community the model of one leader at the top with everyone else at the bottom does not work for communities clear right one or two leaders can can possibly solve all the complex problems that our community face with more community leaders our communities will do better right with more community leaders our communities will do better can we be one are you one can i be one the more people become leaders the more problems we will solve but in the classical way of defining leadership if we have more leaders there we will have more problems right that is the difference but in the community if we have more community leaders our communities will do better the more people become leaders the more problems we will solve this is it. so as teacher in the college as teacher in the university can we play the role of community leaders it's up to us it's up to us no one will say you can play you cannot play you should not be community leader but this is our choice it depends on us we need community leaders to think about and organize around many issues what are the issues in our community there will be many youth development economic growth substance abuse crime environment healthcare the list goes on and on each each issues will require a troop of skilled leaders to handle why should we leave community leadership to the community in the villages of a that's my question can we take the role of leadership or at least motivate the community to come up with good leaders to solve their daily problems to solve their daily issues we need leaders who are women young people we were all young ones it's in the bracket right people of colors regardless of black white yellow low income we need leaders low income among the low income immigrants refugees people with disabilities and many others we have been told that they should follow others not to lead right but here in our community leadership we have to change our mentality we need leaders among this group of people disabilities low income group why we are expecting the low income group to uh, follow the leadership of the rich people our politician who are very rich now we need leaders from the lower group the lower group of people at the bottom so they can do their own they can play their own leadership community leadership there we need leadership from all walks of life in order to in order for ours to be a truly democratic society that's it i don't know if it's yeah i think oh here some more some more is there so two minutes how will all these leaders work together this is a, a big question a challenge there is skill that community leaders need to learn many leaders coming together many leaders in a particular community coming together it's a skill you know to work together we all have to learn to cooperate we all need to put aside longings for turf status and power in order to achieve goals that benefit everyone right 
It's very important. We have to see many leaders come together for the benefit of everyone, not pulling each other, not pushing each other. That's it. Then community leadership example here. A citizens, uh, these are just example we will see. Then after this, we will conclude the thing. A citizen speaks up at the city council open meeting. Her words reveal the key issues regarding a local problem. The resulting discussion leads to a workable solution. No one pointed out that issue, but then a brave lady came and you know spoke about it. Then that, that uh, started the discussion. Then they come up with a workable solution. Such kind of community leadership role she played. A few people in the neighborhood successfully organized to protest the cutting down of trees by the city authority. Right? If we don't do the trees, if they don't do, the trees will be cut down all. But then, you know, they organize themselves and protest. Such kind of leadership we require in the community. A family member generates a plan to help a loved one to stop smoking. See? Smoking, enlisting the support of other family members. One example here, you know, we have mass communication department. They usually have a class wherein students will be learning puppet, puppet. So we organize in our neighboring community villages that these students would uh, organize themselves and show we have puppet show there. Wherein they, with the puppet show, they usually show this like ill health of smoking you know, importance of, you know, uh, you know, the bad things are, you know, how to stop bullying in school, something like that to the school children. So that kind of activities also, we can, we can start for the, the, the betterment of the community. A young person organizes a kick the can game after dinner on the block. Yes, simple, as simple as that. Here is also a group of ministers creates an drug initiative in the community. A teacher periodically invites his students Parent to potluck dinner to talk about school issues. Simple. A member of city council proposes a task force to provide services for homeless people. If we start the kind of thing, many people will come and donate also, you know. Such kind of activities, noble activities. But no one is taking care now. The president of the high school drama club organizes students to do a play that addresses racial conflict among the teens. See, these are just examples. Okay, what is true about all the examples about is simply this. What is true about all the examples above this is simply this. One or more people took responsibility for their community. One or more people took responsibility for their communities. That is the, the, the truth about it, you know? Just that, if there is no one to take up the responsibility, nothing is there. But if someone comes up and take the responsibility, then there we see the role of community leader. I think that's all. I think with this, my presentation is over. I don't know. Uh, my problem here is I cannot see properly the... Yeah, so I hand it over to our... Coordinator Professor Bardendo. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I doubt my, my voice may not be reaching you. So thank you for uh, giving your time in your presentation. Although you had 